G'day folks, Rod Moore here from Learn to Paint Academy and Learn to Paint TV. Welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Today we're going to do a great little seascape painting that's a little bit different from what we might typically do. And we're going to do a painting of, of a, a subject here on the Sunshine Coast down at Majimba. And it's a little island that sits out uh, just off the shore. Um, and it's quite a bit of history behind this island, but here's a photo that I took of it. And you've got this lovely foreground crashing wave and this little island in the background here. So I thought we'd have a go at that. As always, with the more method of painting, we're going to start off with our three steps, three colours, three brushes. So we'll do step one, which is our drawing. There's not much in this drawing at all. It's a really, really simple composition for us to, uh, to get underway. So anybody can have a go at this, even if you're an absolute beginner. And um, we're going to start off with a little small flat brush. I've got ultramarine blue and permanent crimson, two colours that I use for my drawing. So let's do step one of our drawing. Now, most important thing here is this horizon line. The way I've taken the photo, the horizon line sits just over the halfway mark. So we need to figure out where's halfway on this canvas and just run that horizon line up there around about halfway but however what I might do is to make this a little bit easier this painting I'll run it just under the halfway mark so we've got a bit more sky a little less foreground detail so take our little flat brush swishing around in a little bit of water and we'll just pick up a little bit of that blue and the red and we'll mix those two together there and the most important thing is that horizon line it's the dominant sort of line within our uh, subject here and you know if you're taking photos and you're trying to figure out how do I paint that photo always look for what are the dominant shapes the big shapes so that line of that horizon there is a big shape right it sort of establishes all this water area so that's one big shape then we've got the shape of the island that's another big shape and then we've got this wave here that's our third big shape and the sky becomes our fourth big shape we'll probably put a bit of sand in this one just to uh, you know complete the water subject area there. So I'm going to run just under halfway and I'm going to guess, I'm not going to get a ruler out and um, and try and measure it, but I want to make sure it's a nice horizontal line running through there, round about under the halfway. Now what I'll do is I'll measure it with my fingers, right? I've got big hands, so this is a 16 by 20 inch canvas. So if I take a measurement there and then put that there, you can see that I've still got a bit of room in the sky. So that line is just under the halfway mark. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll shift, I'll change the composition a little bit. And I'm, I want to have in just a little bit of sand here in the foreground. So this area in here is going to be sand, which means all this is water. Okay, and then I want to have that wave. We're going to put that wave on the right hand side. And it's going to be around about there. Okay, so it's going to crash down into there. Like so. And it's going to run out through there. Now it's important, just have that crashing part of the wave. Let me just double check here. Just have that on this side of the composition. Because what we want to do when we put this island in here, we want to counterbalance. If I had them overlapping, then it wouldn't have the right feel in the in the composition. So notice I deliberately took this photo. I waited till I mean I took this probably 30 or 40 photos of this subject when I was there, but I was waiting to get that crashing wave just offsetting the island there so that it counterbalances the island, okay? Now, one of the mistakes I've always made or often make when I paint this subject is I make the island just a little bit too big. So I'm gonna start off making it a bit smaller today. And uh, we can always make it bigger, right? So we're just... And I've painted a number of different versions of this island because it is such a great subject. Um, and it's, you know, it's an unusual subject. I think that's why I like it. And it's also, it's a landmark. Now that's a little bit, that's not quite right. So I think what I need to do is just run that up there like that and make it not quite as tall but a bit longer in the body there. Okay, I'll run that. It, it, it's a landmark, you know, all the locals on the Sunshine Coast, we all know the island, you know, Sean Connery, legend has it, used to own the island. I'm not entirely sure that that's true, 
Um, from what I can gather, he just was a frequent visitor to the island. Uh, pretty simple though, really, isn't it? One line for the horizon, one line for this little shape of this wave, one line for the sand, and just playing around to get the shape of that little island right. If you can get those things right, which you can, right? Anyone can do this. Um, then you're on your way. You've, you've started a great looking little painting. It's gonna be a nice little seascape and um, you'll amaze your friends and family with this one, trust me. Um, they'll look at this and go, wow, how did you do that? I didn't know you could paint, right? And even if you've never painted before, have a go at this one. You, you definitely can do this. You'll wind up with a great little seascape. Okay, let's do step two of the more method of painting now. And step two, of course, is our blocking phase. So we're gonna start off with our dark on this uh, little Majimba head. Uh, old, old woman head island and we'll get our dark pretty much the same way we got our drawing color I'll just move that blue there a bit of blue and a bit of the red and I'll just put a tiny pinhead of the yellow in there just to gray it a little and I'll take a little bit of white because it is out in the distance a little bit okay it's not right in the foreground so we want to give it a little bit of distance so I'll just cool that down a little with some blue Okay. So it wants to be a dark, but it wants to be a bluey gray kind of dark there. And that'll just set it in the distance a little bit for us. Okay. Notice I'm just sitting it below that horizon line of the water. So we'll run that water out the back. And got some little trees there on the island. I'll take just a little bit of the yellow ochre, not too much. I'll take a bit of the white and we'll just mix that up. Okay, I don't want this to be too happy, happy blue. So I'll take a little bit of that gray and just mix that in. And I'll just gray it back a little. Okay, and look, this is going to, a little bit more yellow to green a bit more. This is going to obviously dry darker. So we need a little bit of light in there, a little bit of white, okay? And let's just run this water in here. Now you're gonna need plenty of paint. It's a warm day in the studio here and um, the canvas is a little bit thirsty. And so I'm gonna need plenty of paint to make sure that it all uh, moves and blends. And you know, probably the number one thing that I get from our students is my paint's drying too fast. If they're using acrylic, my paint's drying too fast, what do I do? And the thing I always respond back with is, because you know I, I'm in quite a warm climate here, it's a little bit too blue. It's a little bit too blue. So I'm gonna add some more yellow in there. Okay, and I'm just going to work over, over it in parts, not everywhere, but in parts. Um, yeah, so that's the number one thing I get from students is what do I do? So the first thing to look at is the quality of paint that you're using. Um, if you're using cheap $2 shop type paint, then it will dry too fast. There's probably not much you can do about that. Um, and if you try and add water because it's cheap paint, the pigmentation of it will, um, you know, it, it just won't work. It won't look good and it'll be frustrating, right? So. The first thing you can do is to use better quality paint. I'm using the Artillery Interactive, which is a professional grade acrylic paint. And uh, it's a ripper, you know, you can get great results with it. The second thing you can do is to use more paint. You notice I use a lot of paint up here because I'm in an environment here. My studio is in, in a garage in my house and uh, paint dries quickly. <laughs> Just no two ways about that. Um, uh, so I need to, to use a lot of paint so that I can keep blending it and keep moving that paint around. So that's the other thing I would recommend is to use a lot of paint. And the third thing that I would recommend is to use whatever brand of paint you're using is to go back to that brand of paint and look to see if they have a retarder. Um, which will help slow the drying time down. I haven't had great experience using retarders. Uh, but you may, you know, you may find that it works for you. Now what I'm going to do is take the rest of this yellow ochre, okay? A little pinhead of the red, a little touch of the white. We'll mix that up, maybe a touch more white. 
touch more red. Okay. And I'm just going to run that in as some sand. Just blend it, blur it up into the water there. Because isn't that what sand and water do? They blur together as the water comes and goes. There we go. Now that's just our blocking. So we'll obviously come in here and we'll put some highlights on our sand. Okay. Now I'm going to take a flat brush here, a little small one, take a bit of this blue and this red, mix that up, get a touch of white in there, and push it to the blue side. Okay. A little bit lighter again. Okay, that's looking good. And what I'm going to do is just scrub that in through our crushing foam. That's a shadow side of that foam, right? So we'll come in and we'll highlight that. And then that wave's gonna come through there like so. Yeah, we'll add some highlight to that and get some really nice punchy sunlit highlight. But we need a shadow tone there for that foam. Okay, so all we've got left to do now is our sky. Our sky wants to be lighter than the blue in the water there. So we have to keep that in mind. I'm going to use a big brush and we're going to paint it in bangs. We need a gradient in for the sky here. So we're going to start off with a big lot of that blue there and a big lot of the white. Just pop it next to it. Don't put it right in the middle. And then we'll just introduce it bit by bit, okay, until we get a tone that we're happy with. Okay, if you try and mix it all 100% in together at the same time, yeah, it's a bit hit and miss. But if I just gradually work up to it, Something like that'll work, because that's gonna dry you know, lighter. And then I'm just gonna run it across in bands. Okay. Like so. Now this paint is drying a little bit quicker than desirable. That I'm gonna take the tiniest little bit of water. And I, I do that because I know that the Artillia Interactive can handle water. Some of the other brands though, not a good idea. Okay, so I'm just giving you a heads up. Um, acrylic paint is not really, contrary to popular belief, acrylic paint is not really designed to be used with water. That's why the manufacturers all have mediums that you can add. Okay, so I'm just adding more white as we come down, creating that nice gradient. Oop, I've got to be careful on my palette there, Rod. Now, I'm not going for a perfect gradient here today. I want to have a little bit of variety, a little bit of interest in this sky, so I'm going to actually add a few other colors and things in here. So if I've got a few little, you know, shifts in color and tone there, and it's not a perfect gradient, that's what I'm looking for here today. Some days I want to have a perfect gradient, but on this day I want to have a little bit of movement in the uh, sky, Create the effect of a bit of wind and a bit of weather on the horizon, maybe. Pop it on the edge. We get a little bit of this yellow and tiniest little bit of red. Maybe a little bit more yellow. So I want to create some sort of rising heat and atmosphere on that horizon. Okay. And I want to blur that edge where the water is. I don't want a hard horizon. Okay, I'll just work that back up, that yellow. So, so far, so good. A great little painting coming up here. Um, we started off with our drawing, one line for the horizon, an outline for the little island, a little bit of an outline for the foam of this wave, and a little bit of a line here for the sand, but interestingly though, that line we put in for the sand, I mean, I've got the sand roughly in that spot, right? But it's, you can't really tell that there was a line there. I blurred all the edges and so on. So keep in mind when you do your drawing, it's really designed just to figure out where am I gonna place these big shapes? 
Okay. Then in our blocking, we start to define what those big shapes are with softer edges and the tone and value. And then in our third step, we start to tighten up and put the details in and, and the missing information. And um, if you follow that, you know, those three steps of the more method, anyone can learn to paint, right? Which is why we've had 25,000 students around the world have had a go at painting using our approach. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to take a break, leave it for half an hour to an hour. I'll be back after that and we'll have a, another go to do step three and we'll pull this painting together. It'll be a great little painting of old woman head in Majimba. I'll see you after the break. G'day folks, welcome back. We're now going to do step three of the more method of painting, which is of course our details, our highlights, our finishing touches. And uh, this has dried off quite nicely and we're ready to go and start to bring this little painting to life. So first thing we might do is just put a little bit of foliage and shadow and so on on the uh, island here and those little trees and then we'll work back with the water and so on from that point. So I'm just looking at the painting here now. It's a little bit in overcast but we'll brighten it up a little bit. So I'll go for some green foliage with our blue and our yellow ochre. Ultramarine blue, yellow ochre. So I've got ultramarine blue, our permanent crimson, yellow ochre, a cadmium yellow light which I'll just take a little touch and a little touch of white. And what I'm looking for is just a bit of a muted green. So I'll just play around with those colours until I get that. Tiniest little pinhead of the red will grey it back a little bit. Okay, which is kind of what we want because this is sitting off in the distance a little bit. So if I just run that now along the top, there's a bit of shadow in the front there. And uh, we want to make sure we capture that in. And this is the time, you know, in the more method, the steps one and two, they go by fairly quickly. But now we want to just slow down and just uh, take our time as we build up some detail into the painting here now. So I think that's pretty good green that we've mixed up there. Um, it's going well with the shadow tone that we've already put down. Now I'm not going to put this green all the way to the bottom of the rocks there because I'll put in some little bit of work into those rocks. There's a little bit of a cliff. But just a little bit like so. There's still plenty of that shadow coming through. And I'll take a little bit more of this green and I'll just start to work up some of these trees here. So, good, good. Now what I can do, because that's really our mid-tone, I'll take a little bit of pinhead of the cad yellow, I'll just get a slightly brighter version of it there. And I'll just get in a little bit of highlight in a few places on some of these trees. And perhaps along the ridges here. Like so. Okay. So, I'll take another little brush i going to go for a small one here now. I just need to tidy up a little bit of that shadow tone. So I'll get our blue and our red working in there. It's probably a little bit bluer than that. Take our white. Just tidy up that edge there. So that's good. Now, we've got a little bit of an issue with this dipping down there. So 
that's going to be the next thing that we'll fix. I'll just take another um, medium sized flat bristle, bristle brush. We'll get a bit of that blue and a bit of white. Okay, I've just got to bring it to a, a tone that's just one step lighter than what the actual water is there because this acrylic paint will dry a little bit darker. So if I paint it the same, if I mix the same dark, then we're going to have issues when it dries. So I'll just level that off. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just run this right through, and that way we'll have greater continuity of our water. Just, don't know if you noticed there, but I'm just leveling off underneath that um, little island as well. And now I'll just get a little tiny bit of the yellow ochre in there. And work that through. So I'm definitely a little bit lighter than what I painted on there previously. So that's okay. We'll just put that down a little bit, just so that we bring it down from where I started, down to the body of the water there. What I'll do now is take our little um, palette knife and I'll get some white onto that and just a little pinhead of the yellow ochre into there. So you can see I've got a little bit of yellow ochre and white. I'll mix that around, probably need a little bit more white in there. Okay, I just want to tint that white with the yellow ochre. And what that'll do is just warm it up a little bit. Like so, and then I'll just cut through an edge. So I've got a little bit of a ribbon running down the edge of the palette knife there. And then around this rocky... Sort of uh, base of this island. I'll just put in little indications of some water, some foam, and I can pop a few little hints of it up in the back there as well. Okay, one thing I've just noticed is that the there is a tree that's sitting right there on top of the island there that's good now i've also got this crushing white water here so what i'll do is i'll take another slice of this uh, foam with the warm thin it and i'll just start to build up with the palette knife just some of that crushing foam. Now the key here is don't overdo it. Start off just small and, and work your way up to it. And don't have it crushing all the way down. So that's the low point there of the, don't, don't run that all the way down. Just leave a little bit of that shadow tone poking through. Now just blew that off a little bit. Okay, so just go for a darker shade of that green now and I'll just run that in underneath. So run that out to that side. And then we'll 
just go a fair bit bluer again. Just create sort of like a base shadow dark through there. So our wave now starts to take shape. And then in here we've got crashing shallower water. So it's going to be this bluey white mix, like so. Just in through here. And I'm just going to just lightly brush that in. See, I've made one heavier mark there. And uh, you just got to be careful if you've got too much paint on the brush, you're going to get all these, it'll get thick and heavy, which we don't want that to happen too much. So, but in a few spots, it'll be okay. So it's starting to now take the shape of our foamy water. We can, of course, just get some more, a lighter version of that and just run that. In there as well. Okay, that's good. Now let's see if we can get a little bit more transparent water. Okay, cadmium yellow and white, and then just in here in the apex here. So, now to get that bottom edge to blend, because we're using acrylics and it's going to dry out fast, what I can do is just get my brush reasonably clean and dry, just get a little smidgen of water on it, and then I can just use that little smidgen of water just to blend the edges there. Okay. So that's starting to... Uh, Build up that wave quite nicely. taking blue and there's still a bit of green in my brush which I'm okay about adding white and then I'm just going to just work underneath and around a few spots in this uh, wave just to get a bit of shadow side to it as well so I get some of that foam into a like, shadow effect now we'll take some more of this white and just very lightly just build up some more of this white foam. we're going to leave it there folks keep it nice and simple um, I think we've achieved our objective we've got the Majimba Island sitting out there in the 
uh, in the water with this lovely crashing wave and the breaking wave and the island counterbalance each other. It's a nice little beach scene, something a little bit different from most beach scenes and it's pretty easy to have a go at it. So I definitely recommend. Remember our three steps. Step one, our drawing was getting our beach shapes in first, that line there, the island and the wave. Um, there wasn't a lot to that. Then blocking in our basic tone where we got the sky, the water, the sand and so on in. And then you've seen me just detail it up and most of the detailing has been in the water here and the wave and the foam. I played around with that, um, you know, I probably fuss a little bit too much with it. As a beginner, don't overwork it. Um, I just wanted to get a little bit of texture into the water there. A little bit of detailing in the island, but that's about it really. And I'll lighten the sand a little bit just to uh, give it a bit more variety and interest in the foreground there. Uh, but overall, it's a pretty simple little painting that anyone can have a go at. So make sure you have a go at this one. Uh, this is Majimba Beach, looking out to Old Woman Head Island, I think it's called. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this one. Uh, make sure you check out all the other episodes of Learn to Paint TV, uh, the web address underneath me here, www.learntopaint.tv, and register for a free course where I go into more detail about the more method of painting and how to use it and so on. Uh, you can get that free course at our Learn to Paint Academy. So it's www.learntopaint.academy. I'll see you over there. And until next week on Learn to Paint TV, happy painting and cheers for now.